Hi, I'm Dave Brickell, Director of Sales at Paradigm. Welcome to The Big Picture. Ball is reverting. So the obvious trade is always the expensive one to This carry. whole peak inflation, peak rates narrative, peak Fed, which we've if been talking about. So it's an expensive place to find out. Crypto ball, a, a potentially fatal place to you find know, out. The, the crypto option markets are definitely showing some signs of life. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Big Picture. So we've been on a brief hiatus you know, during August summer break. Definitely thrilled to be back in the action and definitely think it's quite timely, you know, given given the events over the past week. But before we dive into today's content with Gordon from Genesis, just have a few housekeeping items before we start. So first up, David, our macro expert and, you know, co-host of the big picture. He's taken a, a little bit of a step back uh, in the meantime. And while he's not going to be hosting as regularly, we're pleased to announce he's still going to be making some occasional guest appearances with us. And But in, in his stead, very excited that Greg from Amber Data is going to be our new permanent co-host on the big picture. So Greg is the architect behind one of the top data providers in Crypto Vol and brings this sort of unparalleled you know expertise and level of data analysis that I felt we were, we were missing a little bit from the show. And we've We've done a couple episodes with him in the past where he showcased his skills and, you know, really, really excited to be having him. So, I mean, Greg, just to, you know, kick us off here, given you're going to be, you know, the new sort of permanent co-host, if you can kind of just, you know, give a quick intro um, for our viewers. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Joel. I appreciate the introduction you gave me. So my background is as a proprietary trader. I was a prop trader in Chicago. I traded uh, chocolate trading and DRW. And then in 2015, I went into crypto full time. And then January 2021, me and my co founder, Pat Doyle, built Genesis Volatility. And then October of last year, that's October 2022, we sold to Amber Data. So now I'm the direct director of derivatives at Amber Data, and I uh, basically run the derivatives data business. And so basically, what we look at is crypto options, crypto futures, crypto firms. Okay, awesome. And additionally, so we're also in the process of adding another host to join Greg and myself. And we're very confident that this this new addition is going to bring, you know, another interesting element to the show. I mean, we can't say who it is as of now. We're still kind of working out some final some final things here, but very, very strong presence in the crypto vol community. Uh, it's going to be really exciting if we can get this over the line. So more more to come on that. Uh, but big thank you. Uh, so far in terms of the loyalty and support you know, to this channel and help us maintain that momentum, please just hit that like, hit that subscribe button, really helps us with the YouTube algo and you know, really get this show out there to the masses. So without further ado, let's, I guess let's just dive right in. So Gordon, really, really great having you back on the show and certainly you know, quite a roller coaster week uh, in terms of you know, what we witness, right? I mean, prices take a sharp 10% nosedive you know, within just a few minutes, but really kind of just felt like some whale really just offloading, only to kind of really immediately level off into this very, very tight price range you know, later in the week. And it's some of the the most extreme vol of all that I've certainly seen. I mean, the, I think the overnight at the money is kind of hitting you know, 100, 120 level. And compared to the front end that was trading, you know, sub 40 vol just less than 12 hours later. And, you know, we've kind of been discussing on Paradigm how over the course of 2023, there's been this aggregate sort of taker interest of, you know, short puts and, and long calls, ex- especially across, you know, the one month to three month buckets. And this sudden sort of market move movement kind of made people, you know, really reposition some of that risk and saw some pretty decent put buying on that move. And, Specifically, there's a pretty opportunist, opportunistic print that you also mentioned in in your um, Deribit Insights piece, where we saw that you know 1,000 of those 10 delta puts, you know, trading, you know, basically right before we really, really took that leg lower. So I'm kind of just curious to hear your take on on the recent market behavior and you know what you've been seeing. Yeah, sure. Thanks very much for the context and. Uh... Congrats and well deserved to bringing Greg Wall onto the show. I'm looking forward to to hearing his regular commentary. Now we can get it 
live uh, video on TBP and not only the Amber Data podcast. So great stuff. And we'll see what alpha he drips there for the benefit of the, the rest of the unwashed masses. But um, yeah, about recent market behavior, look, Secular trends over the course of, of, you know, the last several years in crypto involve compression. And we've talked a lot about that. And notwithstanding some of the spikes, which are, um, you know, kind of evident when you look at the charts, the charts that you you would see on Amber Data and, and you know, kind of virtually any others, they tend to be short-lived. And they're, you know, the, the time process of, um, of volatility has this embedded negative drip to it, um, you know, which, which suggests on the one hand, kind of a um, a long-term institutionalization of the market, as well as greater liquidity and and sort of variance risk premium harvesting, which um, you know again I think Greg Warr was was the lead architect or author of that that great paper analyzing long-term trends in crypto volatility. Um, but what we saw this year, I, I think it would be fair to say, would be you know kind of a a cyclical uptick in the amount of capital being put behind the short vol trade, and that sort of built itself to uh, to something of a head, right? And and it came to a point where we almost had a, I, I would say, kind of a capitulative moment for guys dumping ball. And that was the Saturday before uh, this blew up, right? We saw two-day vol trading at 13%. Um, it, was, it was pretty funny to watch because their mids are not calibrated to go below 20. They're just bounded there, right? Well, so really, I didn't know that. 20. Yeah, well, I didn't know that either. Of course, until I saw that, and then you looked, and when all the two-day vol was being offered at fifteen percent or less, it was showing well through mids, and the mids were all fixed at twenty percent. Um, you know, which which tells you that you know, in the world of crypto vol, people have to have you know kind of non-zero bounds to this, in, in order to be able to um, parameterize it within you know some reasonable quantitative framework. So you know, we went from that to just days later having two-day vol basically trading at 100%, as you said, or overnight vol, it hit almost 120. I think two-day vol was pushing 80s, 90s. I'm not sure if the high print actually traded at triple digits. Um, but but that cascading effect of perps and BTC trading at 28, 27, 5, 27, and then there just being a pure hole, right? A true, um, I would say, liquidity hole in that kind of Nas and Talib dynamic hedging sense where there was nothing in between and it hit 26 and then it hit 25 you know three almost and at that point um you know per funding was basically triple digits negative i think if you you look at you know kind of where the date was uh and and volatility markets essentially dried up right it wasn't just prices gapped it was there was no price um and the liquidations began to happen and liquidations were obviously happening um, in small tickets as, um, you know, kind of risk management engines at the exchange went into effect and they were sort of paying vol until they could get liquidity, which was in many cases triple digit for for overnight stuff and indeed for longer dated options. That's where the real pain was. I mean, we saw longer dated vols go from, you know, mid to upper 40s to mid to upper 70s um, and liquidations at meaty at the money or, you know, quarter delta strike risk for calls. We're getting blown out at 75, almost 80 percent implied vol, which is really quite extraordinary. Uh, I, I think some of the, the biggest prints in size were not in the longest dates. We saw September 32K calls paid in the better part of a thousand units on screens and almost 60 percent implied vol, right, which is roughly double from where that stuff was, maybe 80 percent higher from where it was just days prior. You know, this was pure pain. Um, you know, some was actually exchange affected liquidations, or at least it appeared to be on the tape, and others seemed to be uh, desk initiated liquidations, either discretionary or programmatic. Um, but you, you know, watching the tape, right, and kind of seeing the prints go up on Paradigm, um, you know, seeing how things were flowing through screens, it, it was obvious that there was no real sense of the price of variance at that moment. Uh, and certainly, uh, you know, kind of convexity that is hedging against vol of all could not be obtained, you know, and wings versus ads to the extent that that was measurable was, you know, essentially infinite because vol was moving 10 points at a minute. Uh, and I, I think, you know, just having traded through it and dynamically hedged some of our own first order Vega risk, you know, it was quite clear that you, you would try to be offered within the first or, or you know, couple uh, levels of the book, and, you know, stuff would just sweep up and down. Um, you know, it was almost like seasick to kind of watch. Uh, of course, good to be on the right side of it and, and hopefully being offered in ball uh, into that move because 
<laughs> next phase of it from my perspective was how shockingly quick it normalized, right? And and how we saw those balls uh, in June get paid as high as almost 80 for, you know, stuff like 40 or 45 K calls. Um, you know, March was similar strikes and similar vols. September, as I said, up to 60. And then the stuff was offered down 20 points lower within 24 hours. Um, it's absolutely nuts. It's absolutely nuts. I mean, it, so we have the implied vols on the screen right now. So the, the June at the monies as of this morning is trading 47.6 yeah. right, over the course of like a week, right? It, it's dropped 25 vols with most of that certainly coming, you know, right right at first. I mean, that's the thing I just don't really kind of, you know, understand about this market. While it's, it definitely seemed like last year, you definitely have a bit more of accordion sort of price action where, you know, look, you you have like a big sell-off and then sure, you have some dead cap bounce going on compared to here where you just kind of have this, this stepwise price action. I mean, we sell off 10% in the course of five minutes. And then, you know, over the next week, we're trading in like a $300 sort of price. That's right. It's absolutely yeah, Greg, I think now is probably a pretty good opportunity. Uh, I mean, as we were just discussing how wonky, you know, the basis was was going as the Deribit liquidation engine really kicked in on, you know, some of these short vol positions that needed needed to be covered. Um, do you want to share your screen over me and you can kind of like go through some of the some of the new tools that you've been looking at uh, with Amber data to really analyze this stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Let me, so. Gordon pointed out a couple of really interesting things I just want to share as well. So when we're talking about sort of the the price of convexity, so this bottom chart, butterfly index, for people who don't know it, it's basically the DVOL index or the Deribit VIX, uh, the Bitcoin VIX, divided by at the money 30. So we're really looking at the relationship of wings versus uh, the belly. And so we can see here during sort of that huge liquidation, wings just got crazy expensive. And if I'm looking over sort of the back to January 1st, 2022, we can compare that to, you know, three arrows slash Terra Luna, FTX. So those are the other sort of events that we saw. And it's pretty interesting that we had sort of this craziness happen, but there's not the same catalyst that we had with FTX or 3AC or Terra Luna. This is more of like a liquidity catalyst, it looks like to me. Um, and then on a term structure, we can see how, how expensive the front end got. I mean, we went from extreme contango, basically, trading in the, in the 70 basis point uh, level, or sorry, the 70% level, all the way above the completely flat term structure to about 1.1. So that's that's something that's kind of interesting. Uh, and if we're looking at Deribit's funding, the perp funding, so yeah, we can see how extreme, the, how extreme these levels got. So this is funding paid out, realized funding paid out every hour. So for example, we could see 14 basis points negative in one hour or 25 basis points in one hour for ETH, which in annualized terms is crazy. I mean, times 24 times 365 is sort of the annualized terms. And so that's something that's really interesting. Now, kind of looking forward, one of the things that we're seeing that we also find interesting, this is something that Gravity Sucks pointed out to me. Let me just look at the realized funding, cumulative realized funding over time, going back year to date. So in orange, we have ETH in Blue, we have Bitcoin. So we can see during sort of the uh, SVB banking crisis, uh, when we had that sort of rally back in Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin funding was more expensive uh, than ETH funding. And it's just as of recent where people are paying more to be long ETH, they're paying more ETH funding in the perp starting essentially in the beginning of this month. And we're having a little bit of a flippening there in ETH versus uh, Bitcoin cumulative funding. So that, that's just something that's interesting. I don't know what to make of that yet. It's just an interesting data point that somewhere someone out there in the market is willing to pay up over Bitcoin as far as funding goes uh, in ETH. Yeah, interesting. I don't really know what, what to make of that either. Uh, however, with the big sell-off that we saw, there were, it certainly seems like the big sort of catalyst of, of this sort of nod nosedive was you know, some sort of player, you know, selling out of, you know, their CME sort of BTC futures where I'm, I'm not sure if that, you know, that was something that, you know, led to the funding in BTC to really come down relative to ETH. But that, that certainly is, you know, interesting to see because certainly the narratives at play in terms of 
whether that's the macro or or the ET, ETF stuff or even the flows that we're seeing on, on on Paradigm, just you know BTC upside versus Ethereum upside, really would suggest that you know you would expect BTC funding rates higher than ETH, um, just in terms right. of um, you know interest uh, in the market. But yeah, that's that's really really interesting. Gordon, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this, but yeah. here's one quick p perception that might be the case. You know, maybe someone's managing a, a, a lot of short calls on ETH by hedging with the perps on an under collateralized basis. And so therefore they're, they're paying up on, on the perps in order to hedge that short call exposure. That's the only thing I can really think of. I don't know if anyone else, else has thoughts. Well, honestly, I mean, I think that might be even just a great, great point to end it, right? I mean, it, it kind of you know, loops back to literally the first point of, of what we said. So uh, I, I like to keep these a little bit more short and sweet now, you know, rather than, you know, the 60, 70 minute sort of episode. Thank you very much for coming on, Greg. Looking forward to really getting into the weeds with you on this stuff going forward. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll see you next week.